Welcome to win video number four. This is going to be writing like a scientist as <laughs> uh, instead of, you know, walking like an Egyptian. Okay, I'll cut that out. All right, here's a YouTube video. Hope you enjoy. Most important thing about writing like a scientist is that you have to describe behavior. You have to tell people how to do things. And he says to them, you want a job in a lab, you have to be able to report exactly what you did that would produce the results you got so that someone else can replicate it. So you have to be very accurate. Let's talk about what actually is scientific writing. So first of all, it's factual, not fiction. Um, it contains evidence, and this might take the form of a data or a graph or diagrams, field notes or observations. Um, there isn't a story. There's no characters or plot. It's an informational text, so that means it's not fictional or made up. Unlike my friend Woody here in Bullseye, um, it's definitely not a story. There is no commentary in science. We don't say things like, I liked it when I, or it was fun when I, or I felt, you know, whatever, things like that. Commentary belongs, like I told you guys, in L.A. with Mrs. Rickenback. It doesn't belong here in science with us. Another thing, because we don't do commentaries, we don't include personal pronouns either. And those are words like I, we, us, she, he, they, I see any of those and you get that eh, wrong, okay? No personal pronouns. We don't humanize or personalize things. We don't use the first person, the I think, I feel. We just want the facts when you're talking in science. Um, no opinions, please. So this goes back to our first video together in when, when we were talking about text features. And you noticed, hopefully, in your science textbooks that it's not written like a story. You don't just see words and words and chapters and things like that. You see pictures and captions, you see diagrams and charts and graphs, and most likely you see glossary as well. That is something that is um, very indicative of a uh, scientific writing. I want to teach you the word abstract. Now abstract is one paragraph that you find at the beginning of a lab report, and it summarizes the main ideas. It's very important, it's very succinct, it's very short, but it gets right to the point. And it's something that you'll use a lot if you start looking at a lot of lab reports because maybe you don't have the time to go through 50 pages to decide if that lab is going to help you uh, support or have some evidence of whatever it is you're looking for. All right, here's a little bit about an abstract. Hold tight. <laughs> Abstracts are not always summary, and they're not always linear in description. An abstract will highlight the major points, but it will probably omit some parts of the document. And summary is intended to give readers a, a nutshell idea of the paper, a snapshot, an outline. You also find that abstracts are typically about 150 words to about 250 words, more or less. Okay, so you know that much. They're typically pretty brief, although they can be longer. Where in the world do you find scientific writing, or where do you guys come across it um, in your life? Will you find it in the news? Um, you'll find it in factual magazines um, like National Geographic. Um, you might find it about your health or in your doctor's office. Um, you might find it when you're doing research for things online. Um, you could find it if you're into computer programming or if you're looking for a manual that tells you how to do something. Um, and another place to probably come across it is a lot with weather, where you're trying to figure out what the weather's going to be like. All right, hang tight. One last thing. When I first started as a scientist, I started as a scientist because I loved science, okay? I took a genetics course when I was an undergraduate. It was really interesting. I started working in a lab. And I decided that I wanted to go to graduate school, earn my PhD, and then run my own lab. And what I didn't know when I made that career choice is that what I would ultimately spend probably 70 or maybe a higher percentage of my time doing was writing. And I might well have been dissuaded if I had known that I wouldn't have this wonderful just sitting in my lab thinking of new experiments and executing those experiments. But it turns out that once you get to the stage in the career that I'm at now, a lot of times that gets left to other people in the lab. And so I spend a lot of my time writing now and reading. And that's okay. I enjoy both of those things. But 
I, I didn't really understand when I started in science how important writing was going to be. And so the first thing that I have is just some examples of things that one might do on a regular basis as either an academic scientist or a government or industry scientist. And so one of the most important things is giving presentations. So I write a lot of lectures. Those include uh, presentations that I give either to classes that I teach or I go out and give seminars and tell people about my work. And that, of course, requires writing. So summary time. So how do you write like a scientist? Um, how is it connected to you? Meaning where do you find it? And maybe give me a list of some things that it can include. Um, so as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in class.